Well, it's a beautiful Thursday morning right here on The Breakfast. And it's Zika to join us all the way from Akwaibom State. And some people would say Akwaba Seabom State. Zika Nyaitok, it's good to have you join us. He's a public affairs analyst. What a lovely day from here in Akwaba Seabom State. Lovely to be with you always. Thank you for having me. All right, then let's start off with the uh, leadership newspaper quickly. We'll just run through the pages. Uh, we're looking at the big stories this morning on the pages of National Dailies. And uh, on the leadership, the caption says, Kuja prison attack, Madela Yaya bombers, 62 terrorists, 264 others on the loose. Uh, that's what you find this morning, just as you have Iswap claiming responsibility for the attack on that facility. Underneath the NSCDC officials, four inmates killed, 16 others injured. Kaduna attackers responsible, renew execution threats as victims spend 100 days in captivity. Isop claims responsibility. I am disappointed, says President Mohammed Buhari. Okay. Uh, President leaves for Senegal, aids defend trip. Perpetuators will be arrested, defense ministers vows. I mean, we hear that all the time. Heads must roll. This is what experts are insisting on. Why fuel scarcity will persist in Abuja? Others, federal government is quoted to say, President Mohammed Buhari, OPEC world leaders, others, Man Bakindo. Uh, find more details when you check out the pages. Another says, kidnapped Catholic priest rescued in a door. Alleged organ harvesting. A Kurumadu wife returns to the United Kingdom court today. Some of the headlines you find there on the leadership. But we move away from the leadership. That's because we have the punch in front of us. Uh, it's been made by uh, available by the newspaper vendor. And um, prison invasion. He swap claims responsibility. Freeze Kaduna train attack masterminds. Very detailed. 15 train attack masterminds escape, 49 Boko Haram leaders, 237 orders freed. Over 100 soldiers, DSS, NSCDC operative, guarding bombed facilities. So I know that the argument is, is that why should we always be very reactive? We're never proactive. We wait for things to happen before we take action. Buhari laments intelligence failure as sources allege official complicity. Uh, these are writers you find underneath the board caption. But there are more interesting headlines on the punch. Another one says, fuel cells at 175 naira per litre. Market is planned strike and queues worsen. Just imagine what happened to Lagos and what's even going on currently. Because, you know, the great log is something out of this world. Daura attack air force deploys personnel and fighter jets. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this cause vow to battle federal government over takeover and restructuring. Rising subsidy will stop states from paying salaries. This is what governors are saying. And salar marketers lament the high rams prices and low patronage. People might just have to, you know, look for alternative like Momo. You know, fish and what have you. Uh, Global Fund faults Nigeria's 19.6 million now COVID-19 procurement. That's what you find right there on the punch. Amid convoy, could you attack Buhari jets out again? Uh, I'm confident of defeating Banky W or Banikoro is quoted. And you also have family panics as terrorists threaten abducted train passengers. Lagos neighborhood officials, uh, officer uh, blinds party goer and agency disowns the suspect. It's interesting, but we hope that uh, you know justice should be meted. Hopefully, that happens. Saudi grants Nigeria orders 24 hour extension, and Lagos airport runway short. Airlines predict flight delays. Lots going on in the polity called Nigeria. Away from the punch, we also have the Daily Independent. Jailbreak, Buhari queries security structure at Kujay prison. Expresses shock at level of destruction. 
the president is always in shock. I mean, in all of the president's statements, he's in shock, very shocked. Uh, four dead, 443 inmates recaptured. DCP Abakari or the VP still in custody. Iswap claims responsibility for attack. Buhari reshuffles cabinet and swears in seven ministers. Federal government targets 720 billion naira from bond insurance in the third quarter. Impeachment and battle or your deputy governor knows fate July 26 to die in Lagos boat mishap. Very, very saddening story. Uh, court grants Okorocha permission to travel abroad for Medicare and uh, APC VP candidate Tunubu stock between Erufai and Shatima. And just underneath, you find party chieftain asks court to stop APC INEC from replacing Masari and Buhari jets out to Senegal for IDA summit. And Oshun governor Buhari presents. APC flag to Oyetola. And just before we move away from that, quickly renegotiated agreement. We have done our part. Federal government delaying reopening of varsity. That's what us is saying. Again, federal government accuses marketers of orchestrating fuel scarcity. Lastly, we look at the nation newspaper just in front of us. Uh, Kujay Prison 64 Boko Haram suspect escape after attack. Iswap claims responsibility. I'm disappointed. In intelligence system, the president is saying Abakari uh, Nyema or the safe. Just away from that, 2022 or June 2022, you have another caption saying Buhari gives flag to Oyetola and PDP candidates absent at debate. A delicate promises council's autonomy. Vote buying won't determine outcome, says APP candidate. Abductors again threaten to kill three attack victims. I will make a difference, says Umana, uh, the new minister who resumes Niger Delta Affairs. Well, this is some of the headlines this morning. On the Nation newspaper, let's have Ezekiel Yai to join the conversation of the way uh, from Aquabum State via Zoom. Ezekiel Yai, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me and God bless you, girl. Well, let's allow it open. Which of the headlines interest you this morning on our national dailies? Um, I would like to replace the word interest with um, worries or concerns or borders. And um, the essence of government, I've said this time and time again. And today I'm actually in, um, I've been trying to psych myself up so much to, um, to come alive. I'm actually in a, a near depressed mode uh, because when you look at what people are going through and you see the people that we entrust with power having no understanding, you know, what they have no understanding is like we are singing from two different song sheets. It has to do with security. Government has a Bible and that Bible is called the Constitution. In that Constitution, it spells clearly the essence of government and governance. Chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2b says that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. I couldn't put this passage enough. And think of what's been going on. Let's let's get let's get um Intellectual, not intellectual. Let's 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 think. Take one place called the federal capital. Take the second place called the seat of our military bases. And take the third place called the home of Mr. President. When El Rufai wanted to sanitize Abuja, what he did was to go for the leadership of the PDP that time, the chairman, and hit him. And all hell never broke loose. He did it successfully and went. So when next he's going to another place like Nyaya or Massacre or One Man Village, before he even starts the 
tractors. People are running because they said if he could do this to PDP chairman, the helm of affairs of the state, of the party, then who are we? That psychological or mental capture of the minds of the people gave him the audacity to go anywhere he wanted. What am I trying to say? Kaduna is where we have all the military formations, installations, institutions, and all the shows you can imagine. These people who hit Kaduna left, right, and center with reckless abandon. And we're like, if it can happen to Kaduna, no, it can't happen to Abuja, federal capital. They come to federal capital. They've hit us. And while we are still thinking of, they go to the Mr. President, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, they hit him. And Mr. President is, is surprised. I, I wish I could be surprised that he's surprised. He is surprised at what a common Nigerian will see as next to nothing. That's because he really has no idea what's going on. And what does he do with his surprise? After being so surprised, he enters his jet and is like, okay, guys, uh, don't worry. We'll sort it out. And, and, and he takes it out to, to Senegal. I feel pain this morning. I, I feel, I, I hope that God will be able to forgive these people that toy with the lives. My, my family there in Abuja, they even come out of the house. There's all this um, news going around. Please lock your door. Don't open your gate. So this would have been re released. They are they are in town now, and they can imagine the level of panic, the level of fear, the level of you know trepidation that's gripping the nation. I don't know. Well, but uh, what do you then make? I mean, the, the president seemed to be saying that, uh, you know, the intelligence, the system, it's, uh, it's a systemic failure, uh, pointing to the uh, failure of intelligence at this point in time. So you have uh, in the entire architecture those who should actually have or should be on top of intelligence, and that has actually failed. So... Um, should we still be blaming the president uh, for all of this? And shouldn't we also say that it's okay for the president to be shocked? Apparently, he expected that, you know, the intelligence should be on top of the issue. And intelligence has failed. And some people are saying there might just be a compromise, you know, with officials. You know, there are two sayings. The first saying is that to whom much is given much is expected. The second saying says the box stops at the head and the leadership. So, who has the power to put fear in the minds of the security agencies? Mr. President, when you know that there will be consequences, you will be careful with your actions. I always talk about the three C's. The chances that come your way, the choices that you make, and the consequences of your choices. Now, you are given an office, which is a chance of some sort. The choices that you make with that office you make will be determined by what you expect to be the consequences. If there will be no consequences, why bother? Les affairs, case tras there you just leave it the way it is. So the box stops on the table of Mr. President. We, you know, he's just telling us what they say all the time. Oh, we're going to look into it. I need to get a, a report. I need to blah, blah, blah. We know it. We know it. We, why, why, why can't they just surprise us for once, for whatever is worth? We know how it ends. We know it has ended. Not even we know how it ends. What stops Mr. President for whatever is worth suspending one, two, three people on the spot? Pending when there is this investigation and this report. And we're like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? This seems now he has taken one action. That action is going to that place. I'm still trying to understand why he went. 
Because usually he won't even Shehu Garuba will just release a press statement. Mr. President is shocked. You know, uh, we are on top of the situation. He has ordered an investigation, and we will ensure that no stone is left unturned to ensure that we apprehend and get the perpetrators and bring them to book. You know, it's, it's a script that I can even write it for him. That press release is, is a standard press release that they just change the date and the location and the circumstance. But the content remains the same, seven years. So, but he has taken one bold step, I must commend him, of going there. I'm still trying to wonder if there is something of interest that made him to go there, you know, because he wouldn't go, he wouldn't. But he's gone. So I, I think that at the end of the day, we cannot but hold him responsible for uh, whatever actions should be taken which have not been taken yet. All right, Ezekiel Yaritouk, um, let's also look at all the I mean, concerns this morning on the pages. Uh, it talks about uh, fuel sells at 175 naira per litre. Uh, that's on the punch. As marketers plan strike and accuse Watson. Now, the president is also blaming uh, marketers, fuel, uh, you know, all marketers for uh, the scarcity, the current scarcity that's going on. I mean, they're responsible, according to, you know, that statement for castrating the fuel crisis. When you are Mr. President, you take responsibility. The next person in line to you is the minister. The minister should be called to answer certain basic fundamental questions. And while I was still thinking of who the minister is, I discovered again, is the same Mr. President. Why would you want to be the minister of petroleum, for goodness sake? It's so ingenious in a country that is in dire need of diversification and they are thinking so much of diversification. Mr. President is telling you that the most important institution right now is Ministry of Petroleum, Petroleum, oil, oil. So mentally we are fixated on oil as the way and not as an option. I can imagine if Mr. President had said, look, the Ministry of you know, ICT, you know, science and technology, I want it to be under me because the new normal, the new future of Nigeria is ICT, and that's the current global trend. So I'm going to imagine how young people will say, wow, ICT is the interest of Mr. President. Then he sets up an ecosystem that will isolate the bad guys from the good guys. It's so easy to do. And our people are so endowed in 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 ICT that you 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 reap that I don't even know how to put it, but Mr. President is the Minister of Petroleum. Now petroleum is not working. The queues are back. The subsidy is one thing that we call a scam. Before a man who has been in charge of um, PT at that time, you know, uh, effectively petroleum, who comes to say that subsidy is a scam for all the years and then becomes Mr. President, and now discovers, oh, I didn't know. I, I didn't know better. I expect him to start with an apology, and then let us, now that we must have subsidy, there are so much discrepancies. How much fuel do we import? What are the dynamics? Why can't refineries work in A in seven years? What is the game plan? What is the roadmap, Minister of Petroleum? How can you be Mr. President and Minister of Petroleum at the same time? Well, Who so we but, 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 I mean, but man is hardly around. That was happening. Yes, off, off to Senegal. Uh, but but that's on an official duty Senegal. now. Uh, I mean, it's 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 actually attending to some official duty. Uh, you know, according to the reports that we have. Right here. But the federal government I, saying I, this I, would... Uh, 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 please, you are a journalist. I appreciate you said that. But I, there's something called priorities. There's something called priorities. Tell me that what he's going for is something that could not be delegated. And it is more important than him sitting down when the federal capital is being attacked. Federal capital. But, but, and the most sensitive political prison is being attacked, and they were attacking that institution for over two hours, I'm told, in the federal capital. 
We have Tokano jets. We have drones. We have everything. Two hours they were operating. They finished operating. Now the figures coming out, nobody can tell. You know, when you add up the figures, it just tells how disorganized we are. Less than 1,000 inmates, let me even say 2,000. We can't even know how many are remaining, how many are gone, how many are these. So many hours, days after, we can't tell the figures. Look at all the papers, everything is jumbled up. There's no situation room that is giving us blue and blow account of what is going on. None. And then something very important has to take our president out of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But you know, Ezekiel, uh, 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 to, to, to be realistic, you know, discretion is actually, uh, priority is actually discretional. I mean, who, who, how do we, uh, you know, who, who, who states what is uh, priority to the president? It, it's discretion. I so it's, it's, within, is, it's within it's, his discretion. No, no, no. And it, it shows that. To me. No, no, no. Listen, listen. Sister, sister. Mr. President is not a monarch. He's a chief executive paid by our salaries. He reports to us. We don't report to him. We set the salary, the, the priorities, and the constitution says the priorities. The constitution says my security and welfare is the number one priority. And I occupy a higher office than the office of the president. I in the office of the citizen of, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is higher than the office of the president. I set the priority. I set the priority, not him. So don't ask who sets the priority. The citizens said the priority. They say, my welfare is paramount. What are you going to do in Senegal? Secure me. Secure me. Make me feel safe. I said the priority. Not Mr. President. He's not a monarch. He's not a, he's not a, he's not an emperor. He is a, a, he is, he's like a prime minister. He's not like a king or a queen. But, but uh, Mr. Zikanya, I, took, I understand where you're coming from, but you also need to face the fact that it's a reality. And you talked about uh, what should be a priority. And is your priority is discretionary. What's a priority to you might not be a priority to the president, even though the Constitution has stipulated He's not there that. For himself. Yes, the, the Constitution is very act. explicit. He's not there for himself. It, it, He's there for me. How, how, do, how you, do we now, you know, let, how do you hold him? How do you bring him to book? Even when the Constitution states that the security of the welfare of the people is the responsibility of government, to what extent do you, you know, hold the president accountable for all of that? As much as we constantly say that, yes, uh, you know, the issue of security is within the exclusive list. It's sensitive. And the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. Yeah, you have the president saying that, you know, he's disappointed at the level of intelligence uh, that, that, that's happening. Please, and so so please, how do you explain please. all of this? So what have you done? What has he done with that disappointment? What has he done? What it's, has he done? You know what? Let me, let me say something, sister. If we set a poll today and ask Nigerians between staying back to give us comfort and confidence and traveling, I want to tell you that over 99.9% .9 of Nigerians will say, we are so afraid, we are so scared, our lives are in danger. Please tell us what to do. Please forget the track. Even if he was going to even commission something in Nigeria, they will even tell him, please leave that thing alone first. Do you understand me? NNPC, they were about to, you know, no, let me not go into that one. You know, they will say, please, oh God, leave that one. Even if you are going to attend the burial of my late mother or whatever, I will, I will be one to say, don't come, sir. Thank you. Don't come. Just tell us how you can secure us. That's how much we are willing to even sacrifice personal things than something that you can delegate somebody else to go, go for a conference. The priority is my safety and security. Go to Ukraine. Look at a guy that was that was a comedian, comedian, comedian. See how he's become a commander in chief, sitting in front, leading from the front, and he's able to hold out against Russia, mighty Russia, mighty Russia. A comedian. Our president is a general, and we're in times of war. We're in war. We're in war. He cannot afford the luxury of, of jetting out to go and attend a conference. When my eyes can, I cannot sleep. I can, I mean, you're here, but my family, I, I'm, I'm calling every, every second what's going on. The security man, talk to me. Is there anybody at the gate? And you are telling me about the conference somewhere? Well, quickly, talking about the issue of power and the fact that it's very epileptic. We have seen and had reports. Uh, the other part, you also have counter reports, you know, from hospital, for, for instance, Potakot, uh, saying that 
children didn't die due to power outage. There was power outage, but you didn't have 14 babies dying in the incubator. Also, um, there's also another report from uh, the management. We're talking about the hospital, uh, Teaching Hospital University of Ibadan. Uh, they're also s imposing on patients a thousand naira. Now the federal government is saying that uh, there might just be plans to take over the discos, and the discos are saying they would battle that with the federal government. Do we have a distribution problem, or the problem that we have is a generation problem? We have business interest problem. It has nothing to do with distribution or generation. We have is, is business interest. I, I know the people involved. I know what's going on. I have an idea of what's going on. We don't have any of those problems. The day we have a sincere government that will have a sincere dialogue and within the context of number one, please, do you have the competencies? Is yes or no? Do you have the capacity? Is yes or no? Who does have the competencies and the capacities? What is the adequate cost reflective pricing that makes you break even before we now talk in terms of the margins. If it is five naira that is the effective cost, you know, uh, 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 break even point, five naira, you know, can you generate within the five naira? If it is six naira, which is or rather, if it is more than that, or you want to sell at more than that, who is going to pay the subsidy? If I generate at five naira, and you want me to sell at four naira, there's a one naira gap that must be filled to break even. Do you allow me to add that one naira and make it six naira? Or will you pay me the difference? An honest conversation on power generation. From generation to distribution, when you go to the discos, the discos, a lot of times, power comes in, they do not buy that power because they are thinking in terms of how they are going to sell the cost differentials and how they will stay afloat. This is very open secret that we all know, but we all play the ostrich and then we complain about what doesn't make sense. The day we sit down, there was a time I sat down for over an hour or two with the boss at NERS and we look at facts, figures, data, statistics, and we just see that we are not honest and sincere in government and in governance. The former boss that was there, Sam Amadi, is a very, very close and personal friend. The facts are as clear as day. What is the cost reflective pricing? If you want me to sell below that cost, is it uh, a uh, cost I, who but, is subsidizing it? But is it a We cannot rule out the fact that if you look at the generation, I mean, look at our capacity with the existing plant that we have across you know, the country, we, we should be generating about 12,000 megawatts. And 12,000 megawatts is not enough to cater for the needs of over 211 million Nigerians, we're just saying. Uh, but right now, we're I not even... You, uh, this, we you know why I'm saying this? On no, but is it, you, we can't say that the problem that we're faced with, because you're saying that we don't have a problem, we have a business problem, which can be understood... But we can also rule out the fact that we don't have a generation problem. Because you, to, to, really, to, to really look at this, you cannot give what you don't have. So if, if, if the generating... No, let me give you information. Let me give you information. Please, as a journalist, find out if we have generated power that is not collected. Find out that. Do me that favor. You can't be talking of generating more. I'm telling you that the ones that we generate, they don't evacuate all. They don't. It's 8 o'clock. I'm giving you information that your station can work on. The problem is deeper than that. The little that we generate, 
the discos don't take all. Some of them are still locked in the grid that is not collected. We have fundamental issues. That's why each time people talk of generation, 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 that's just one side of the story. What I'm telling you is that the discos don't evacuate all the generated power. Find out if I'm misleading. So, 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 so how much are we generating? Uh, what are we, are we generating enough? Why are they not distributing? If we're saying that we're not generating, we don't have a capacity to generate up to 12,000. And we're generating below... Yeah, and we're generating easy. below 4,000 megawatts, then, then what, how do you distribute that? You have different sectors. Residential, you have the hospital, you have different so, sectors. What do you then distribute? Because you can't give what you don't have. You're not listening to me. I'm listening. And Nigerians need to listen. There is a man who generates. There's a man who collect and distribute. Sometimes the man who collects refuses to collect all. Why? Because the ma if the man who is generating is not selling off all his generating, then you are telling him to generate more. You have not attacked the problem from first principle. But if the, 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 the man who is collecting He's, 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 he's so much in a hurry to collect more. Bring more. What is seven megawatts you brought is not enough. Please bring more. Bring more. If the pressure is on on the man that is generating, he is now having reason to generate more. But this man who is generating, he's not having all his powers evacuated. Please find that out. Now, because you now come and ask, why is this man not collecting all? Because of the dynamics of subsidy of power. That dynamics of subsidy, where this man who buys this power wants to make sure that he can sell it at a cost he can get back, so that the man who is subsidizing pays him back. It's a simple dynamics that we don't talk about, but that is the reality now. And unless you attack that issue of a man who is selling, being able to get back his money and wanting to buy more, and putting pressure on the man who is supplying so that that man will go out and even find a way to supply more. We have not attacked in first principles the pricing of power in Nigeria, whether we want to subsidize or we want it to be cost reflective. Unless we attack that, all these stories about generation is just think about it. Get, get, get a specialist and tell him to analyze what I've just said, and then, that's when Nigerians will move go to the bottom of the problem. Oh, well, let's leave it at that. Uh, moving away from that, quickly, we also have the Daily Independent newspaper, and it talks about the president reshuffling his cabinet, was in seven ministers, and out of them you have Umana Umana, who is, uh, you know, the minister of Niger Delta. Well, what do you make of him and his emergence as a minister? What difference well make. my my comments um my comments will be biased at this point <laughs> mano mana is my very good friend he's somebody that's extremely hard working he's not one for the paraphernalia for the you know limelight and everything he's a he's a smooth operator so i can say these kind words which fortunately for me are true but I cannot divorce it from the fact that he's my friend. So I expect my, uh, the person that was there before, Mr. Pabio, is also my friend. But he's more like, um, he's more of, um, you know, you know what I'm saying, you know. So, but Mr. Manu Mana is more, more, more of a hard worker who is going to sit down and look at issues. So I, I actually think that there's going to be, the time is short, but I, I believe there will be a, a difference in the Niger Delta Ministry, which is going to dovetail into the NDDC, I, I think is one positive development. I must thank Mr. President for that choice of Mr. Omanu Mana for the Niger Delta Ministry. I would like them do, not to play the politics of moving NDDC at this point back to the presidency. I want to appeal that it should be allowed to stay under the Niger Delta Ministry, where I know that Mr. Omanu Mana will be able to look into the matters and address issues in the larger interest of the Niger Delta region.
when he was secretary to government in a quiet homestead, he did very well. And where he was operating just before he left, you know, the uh, the oil and gas uh, free trade zone uh, stuff, he did very absolutely well. All the indices show that he took that uh, institution to a next level uh, positively. So coming into Niger Delta, notwithstanding that he has probably effectively about a few months, and then there's going to be pressure on him to perform with respect to funding elections. I think he's a wise man, wise enough to know what to do, where to go, how far to go, what lines not to cross. And that's the sort of person we need at this point in time so that NDDC does not become another funding institution for politics in a way that is obscene and negates the essence of the institution. I am very, very happy with Mr. President, and I know that Mr. Manu Mana will do very well. Well, Ezekiel and Yaitouk, thank you so much for the perspective and insight you've brought this morning to the big stories on the front pages of the National Dailies. We say thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, once again, looking forward to having more of you share your thoughts right here. And just before our first major conversation right here, let's tell you what happened today in history. Stay with us.